343 just addressed major issues with Halo Infinite, talking about the networking, the custom game browser issues, multi-use customization, the future of cross-core, stability and crashes, as well as when Firefight and the mid-season update comes around. So if you guys want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. This tweet from the senior community manager, John Unishak over here talking about major details that everyone's been asking. I've been seeing a lot in my comment section as well about Halo Infinite. So here's what the senior community manager at 343 said on Twitter. First to talk about networking, specifically desync. Saying, we touched on it during a Spartan chatter earlier this year, but wanted to speak to it again since it's coming up as a common topic after season five's launch. Previously, our focus was on improving the existing system bit by bit. However, we recognize that this was not having the impact that we wanted and you expected. So we decided to pursue fundamental changes to the underlying networking model. Since this decision was made, the team has been heads down on a more comprehensive overhaul. An endeavor of this scale takes time, which is why we haven't had many updates to share. Significant work has been done here already, with more still underway. We'll share more when it comes closer to the public testing phase, meaning we should begin a flight coming around when it comes to the desync issue that's underlying the network problems of Halo Infinite. This is one of the biggest issues with the game. I see it almost in every comment in my videos saying like, they have they fixed desync yet? Not coming back to play, which I would say it certainly is an issue. I've experienced it myself, but not in, to the scale where it would stop me from playing Halo. I talked about this Spartan Chatter that Unishek mentions in a previous video. So if you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo and gaming, make sure you tap subscribe because apparently 77% of you are not. So you know what to do then. So this sounds like, yes, currently they are working on desync, but it's going to be taking some time as it sounds like more of a fundamental issue with the networking of the game rather than just like a superficial oh change this a little bit of that you have to go down to like the basement level of what the coding of the networking of halo infinite is so then they can actually make it function properly when 343 does figure this out this is going to be a massive change to not only just the networking but also map design after speaking to many forgers who have had their maps put into matchmaking they always say that one common thread about how they have to nerf their maps in a way is because of desync. These forgers saying that they would add really cool elements to their maps, but then would have to either nerf them or just completely take them away because it would cause desync issues. So then it would make it so a matchmaking would just be a complete mess. Keep in mind that desync is different from being the shot around the corners issue. Those are two completely different problems. Desync is more of like an issue of what's happening on your screen is not actually happening. Where being shot around the corner is more lag compensation. I wanted to make that the distinction because there's so many times within discussions online here about Halo that I see people talking about any kind of networking issue, it's instantly desync. Like, no, those are two different things. It's exciting to see that we will have a public testing phase when it comes to the networking of Halo Infinite, though I couldn't imagine it being kind of difficult as a normal user to really get a chance to analytically break down what desync you experience within the game. Hopefully 343 has some kind of metrics put into the testing phase so they can track when desync actually happens. But of course, once that public testing phase happens, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Next, we have the custom game browser, which has been seeing a massive population increase. And here's what 343 had to say about it. With the launch of the Forge AI toolkit and custom game XP in season five, we've seen an explosion of custom game sessions and interest in the incredible experience being created by the community. That said, we're aware that many of you have reported issues when trying to leverage the custom game browser Browser to join these sessions. Typically, these loading issues happen because other players were joining the same session at the same time, causing the lobby to fill up before you're able to join in. We are reviewing your feedback, support tickets, and game data to investigate potential opportunities to improve the custom game browser experience in the future. I think one way 343 could fix this issue is allowing people to sort by active lobby size. And what I mean by that, let me show you. So right here, we have sorting type, you can sort by max Max players that can be in a match, create a date, and ping. So if I want to join a large scale lobby that has players in it, I have to kind of sort through and see who is available when it comes to matches like these two down here. I have like 13 players. 
Uh, this is a 24 player, 24 player one, but a lot of one and two player lobbies and stuff like that. If I could sort by how many active players are actually in a lobby, then this would, I think, help alleviate this issue. Because I feel like this is more of an issue of just not being properly communicated to the players rather than actual issue that's with the game. If I was trying to join like a 24 player lobby, I would probably join like these 13 player lobbies. Maybe if there's like a 17 player lobby or something like that. If there was like a 24 out of 28, I wouldn't bother joining that because I know it's going to be full and I'll have to wait. I don't want to wait. I just want to play the games. Basically, I just kind of want the same filter options that you see right here in the Master Chief Collection, where right here I can actually sort by how few players are in a lobby and how many active players are in a lobby for a single match. To me, I feel like this is a much more logical way to sort things out. And then you can also search under like say like Team Slayer or something like that, and you can come up with certain matches right here as well. So I feel like this is more of a UI issue rather than an underlying game issue. Next, we have some information about multi-use customization, AKA CrossCore. Stated, after hearing your feedback here, the customization team brought the highly requested ability to wear any helmet on any core in season five. We plan to continue our work in this area by going after multi use shoulders next. Beyond shoulders, the team plans to add multi-use support to more armor coatings in future updates. Since there are a lot of coatings multiplied across multiple cores, this will continue to be done in waves, like Season 5's additions. We understand how important shoulders and coatings are when creating your ideal Spartan, and we're committed to getting as much multi-use functionality in these areas as possible. Once that work is complete that means your spartans will have access to helmets shoulders visors and a plethora of armor coatings all of which will have been made multi-use thanks to your feedback additionally the first hcs team bundles from season one are still planned to be updated so that individual items from them can be equipped when this makes its way to people who pick them up the armor coating will also be able to be used on multiple armor cores so it's great to see that work is still being continued for cross core customization. I would agree that shoulders would be the next highest priority when it comes to armor customization. Then after that, probably chest piece. But this is kind of how I thought it would happen. It would come in waves. It would come in sections. It's not going to be one day. Everything's going to be available for every core. Next, to talk about stability and crashing and also the mid-season update, which should bring firefight. The stability and crashing reporting options right now for Halo Infinite when it comes to this information that was provided by 343 is more just them to get more data of what causes crashes, what causes instability within the game. Saying that they are continually working on improving these reporting tools so that they can actually go after these bugs and issues. Now, when it comes to the mid-season update, the fun content stuff, Unishake does say, during this season, we'll also have an update that brings Firefight King of the Hill the repair field equipment, bug fixes, stability improvements, and more. We're just as excited as you are for this one. We'll start sharing more as we get closer to its release. Now, this kind of depends whenever 343 considers the mid-season for Halo Infinite, but I highly suspect that we'll see these tied with an operation that's coming in. Let me show you when those dates are coming in right now. So we have combined arms, which is gonna be the first operation, which is gonna be replacement events, if you guys don't remember, which are last about four to six weeks, as they mentioned. So the first operation combined arms which comes on november 14th this will also bring the halo 3 remade playlist when it comes to the maps and modes and things like that so we could see firefight come with this but i have a feeling it will come with the winter contingency 3 update for that operation coming around on december 19th which actually would probably put us more in the mid season of season 5 so if you want to stay updated with any kind of changes that come along with halo infinite make sure you tap subscribe to the channel here i'll catch you on the next one peace out